Now, two months ago, I released my 100% Honest Update review where I talked about the fact that I think Brawl Stars is in trouble. Now, in this update review video, I'm gonna talk about whether or not the Mega Pig update has what it takes to save Brawl Stars. We'll talk about progression changes that came with the Mega Pig and the removal of Club League. We'll talk about how much of a nerf that progression is for some people and how much of a buff it is for others. And honestly, a whole lot of other stuff as well. So I'm gonna be 100% honest with my thoughts. So I hope you can appreciate my honesty, even if you may disagree with some of my opinions, just like I hope you can appreciate the fact that I couldn't make videos like this without the help of sponsors. We've got more to cover, but I want to give a huge thank you to Sony for sponsoring this video. Sony Inzone just came out with earbuds that are specifically made to be top class for gamers. Believe me when I say you're going to want to check out the link in the description below because these are insane. But they come with a USB-C dongle for when you're serious about gaming with an extremely fast wireless connection. And these do have spatial audio, so it will give you an advantage whether your opponents are like, you know, to the left, right, behind you, above you, even below you. What's crazy is that while using this low latency dongle, you'll actually get a 12 hour battery life. And believe it or not, if you need more battery life, it gets even better. You'll get 24 hours using Bluetooth LE audio and you can double either of those times using the included charging case. And the sound quality. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Now by connecting these to your PC and using the in zone hub, you will get a sound tone personalization that configures the sound to your physical ears, your unique ear structure. Plus you can swap between ambient and active noise cancellation on the go with a tap of your finger. I literally can no longer hear the fan on my PC anymore. And the mics use AI based noise reduction so the people on your voice call aren't gonna hear your fans either. And this design is how you get insane long-term gaming because the main body is actually outside of your ear. So it's really comfortable. And whether you get a white set like mine or black ones, you will have the ultimate wireless audio experience for gaming. So click that link below and check out the brand new Sony InZone Buds. And once again, a huge thank you to Sony for sponsoring this video. Okay, now I have a lot of thoughts about the Mega Pig. Some of them may be controversial, but I wanted to talk about some other stuff before we get to that because, you know, save the juicy stuff for last, you know. Brawl Stars changed the brawler description of every brawler and a lot of them actually add some interesting lore into the game. Now, additionally, there are whispers about potentially more lore being released this update. I've heard some leaks. I've heard some rumors. I'm going to wait to cover them until things are officially out and I actually have some time to be able to like make a good solid Brawl Theory video on it. But I am very excited about the game's story advance advancing like in such a big way. Brawl Stars has such an interesting story behind it and I still have way more questions than I actually have answers. So the fact that it seems like they're doing some lore stuff this update, that's really huge. That's a big win for me. A little bit of a spicy transition here. We only got one new brawler instead of two like we normally get. Honestly, I think that some people are making a way bigger deal out of this than they need to, okay? I, I don't think it was a big deal personally. Like, I, like, it's fine. We used to get a lot fewer brawlers than we do now, and so I'm good with the team releasing only one brawler every now and then so they can keep up with other content. Also, it's like one fewer brawler that I have to, like, max out my free-to-play account before I'm actually maxed out. So, like, you know what? We don't have as many brawlers, but now it's a little bit easier to catch up. Okay, now I know hypercharges weren't this update. It was last update, but I still want to talk about them. Last update, my biggest piece of criticism regarding hypercharges, well, except for the fact that they're expensive, was the fact that they weren't very unique or game-changing, okay? They were mostly just like, Here's a Spike Super, but now it's bigger. Here's Colt Super, but it's bigger. Here's Shelly's, but it's bigger, right? This update, though, I definitely think they improved on that. The new hypercharges actually changed the way that a few of the brawlers are actually played, and it adds actual depth to the game. Now, I still, like, personally, I think they could kick up the creativity, like, another notch, but I think they did good, especially when you consider the fact that a lot of, well, you know what? I take that back. We did get some, like, chromatic brawlers, right? I was going to say that I'm fine with lower rarity brawlers having less confusing or, like, unique hypercharges, but I, we actually did get some hypercharges on some really high rarity brawlers or rare rarity or whatever. Either way, my point stands. They were more creative with their hypercharges. Like I said, I think they could kick it up just a little bit of a notch, but that's less of a criticism and has probably more to do with my personal preference, which is to have crazy big game exploding different abilities and stuff that might not even be healthy for the game in the first place. <laughs> and we did like how they changed how the new hypercharges were actually released. Every hypercharge became available um, with early access once the update dropped so people could spend 
sudden gems to buy them, or they could wait two weeks to purchase them with gold. I really love that they allowed you to just spend 79 gems to just buy the hypercharge alone at a discounted price without all the cosmetics. I also love that they just straight up decreased the cost of the collector's pack when it comes to actual just gem Christ prices. I don't love that you couldn't actually purchase the collector's packs with coins anymore, but I don't think that very many people had enough coins to make those purchases, so it probably won't affect too many people. Like, those collector's packs, those were for people that were completely maxed out and are sitting on hundreds of thousands of coins. Like, that's that's who it was for. I think making them cost gems only and decreasing the gem cost of the collector's pack, it, it makes more sense for a lot of players. I understand some people being upset about it, but I think that it makes sense. Now, from a player's perspective, obviously, I want everything free, and I want it immediately, right? But, you know, they got to monetize things, so it, it does make sense. I think they did a good job with it. One thing I absolutely love, which I was worried they weren't going to do, was that they would release one free hypercharge with the Hypercharge Unleashed event. And this update, it's even easier for, to, for you to unlock and complete the quest, and you have more time to do it. And, and that's true, even though they weren't able to start the event until two days after the update due to, like, bugs and stuff like that. That was the funniest set of bugs. Like they went into maintenance and then everything crashed. They couldn't start matchmaking. And the only way that you could get into the game was if you rotated your device or you took a picture of the loading screen. It's such a weird and funny bug. I don't usually talk about bugs in my honest update reviews because, you know, things get released. They're not always perfect. Like bugs are like... They, they get patched as they go. It's not a big deal. But I just thought that was so funny. I just thought it was so hilarious that Danny literally had to release a video showing, look, I promise you guys this works. Here you go. We'll open the game back up for you. <laughs> anyway, back to the free hypercharge event. I love it. I think it's awesome. I think that it's really cool, honestly, that you could just get a random hypercharge. It could be any of the hypercharges for free. Like, if it doesn't matter what brawler I get the hypercharge unless it's Jackie. I won't max out Jackie on my free-to-play account for a very long time. But if it's any brawler other than Jackie, Jackie, okay, maybe Bull. If it's any brawler other than Jackie or Bull, you better believe I'm going to max out that brawler on my free-to-play account just because it has its hypercharge. It's really exciting. I love it. I, I'm really thankful that they are going to be releasing hypercharges with the Hypercharge Unleashed event. Now, one piece of feedback that I gave in the last update was that I wish that they would release more than six hypercharges this update to prepare for the World Championship happening soon. After all, there are only going to be 12 hypercharges in the World Championship. And that's really weird. This is like obvious feedback. Tons of people gave that feedback. I think every single pro competing probably gave that feedback. I doubt that the team just like ignored it and just chose to be like, oh, that's a bad idea. Let's just not do that. I, I think it's pretty safe to assume that they would have liked to have released more hypercharges, but they only have so much time to develop new content and new hypercharges. And the same developers who make hypercharges are also the same ones who actually program new brawler abilities into the game. The fact that they only had time to release one new brawler should tell you that they, are, they just didn't have enough time to release six in more than six in this update. Also, as much as I would like every brawler to have a hypercharge as fast as possible, it's actually better for free to play players if they do take their time. Assume they continue to release new hypercharges with the Hypercharge Unleash event. That means that every single time they release a new batch of hypercharges, players will get one free new hypercharge. With 60 brawlers left without a hypercharge, we will get 12 free hypercharges if they continue to release six every update, and one of them is on a new brawler. In fact, it might even take longer if they continue to release more than one brawler every update, or most updates, right? I mean, those 12 hypercharges will take two years for us to get for free, and I really don't want them to take that long to get every hypercharge on every single brawler, but I will happily take free hypercharges. I think that's my point here. I promise I'm gonna be talking about Mega Pig and all the controversy around that. But let's talk about the new skin recolors, or really the old skin recolors. We're specifically talking about Hoot Hoot Shelly and White Wolf Leon, which are recolors of exclusive skins. Honestly, I think that they crush this. I love how they handled this. The exclusive skins are remaining exclusive, and the new skins actually have some different animations from their originals. So there is still kind of a reason to purchase them both. Additionally, people who did have the exclusive ones are getting a 50% discount if they want to buy the new ones. It is a win-win for everybody. It's so great. Big thumbs up to Supercell on how they listened to our feedback on this. I know there was a whole lot of controversy around that. <laughs> that was a lot of drama. 
drama. Uh, but I think people can pretty much agree that uh, the way that Supercell went about it ended up pretty fantastic. Also, I liked how they rebalanced so many gadgets and star powers in the game this update. You'll recall that last update, they increased the power level between levels, which left a lot of gadgets and star powers to be pretty weak because they had flat damage and heal value. So they needed a 33% buff in order for them to be the same before those changes. I'm sure that they could have just buffed each ability by a flat 33% to make, to like help things match up. But instead, they actually took the time to select a buff that made sense or sometimes even a nerf for some of them. So while a lot of them are actually the same as before, most of the star powers and gadgets that got touched were actually either buffed or nerfed compared to before. Now, I'm not saying that all of the uh, balance changes were perfect. After all, balance is nearly impossible to get perfect. I think Adrian does a fantastic job with, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he has to balance the game for pros and noobs. Like, how do you do that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm saying, I think they did a great job. He did a great job with it. But what I'm mostly saying is I really like that we got a lot of balance changes this update. Like we had almost 100 balance changes this update. And even if most of them were just really small tweaks to individual star powers or whatever, I love getting lots of balance changes. Okay, that's pretty much all the content that's not so controversial. Let's talk about the Mega Pig. Long story short is that I love the Mega Pig but I don't love the progression nerfs that came with it. <laughs> but we'll talk about progression nerfs a little bit later on. Let's talk about why the Mega Pig is so great. For starters, they removed the Club League and the Club Shop, and I'm actually good with them doing this. While Club League was an amazing source of progression, and you could even like abuse the Club Shop in order to like try and convert your power points into coins, and I did all sorts of weird like manipulations of the system on my free-to-play account that you guys can go and watch if you want. Either way, Club League, very tedious. The club games were fine, like when you just had those weekly quests that you just like deal damage, heal, or whatever. Those were just fine because as long as you're getting your daily eight wins and 200 tokens, then you would complete those without any issues, even if you were just playing them solo without a teammate. But Club League was a whole other level of tedious. The most annoying part about Club League, at least for me, was finding club mates to compete with so you could get more of the trophies so you could win more, right? It was super fun at first, I'll be honest, but it got stale and it got really stale. I completely stopped doing it on my max account just a few months after it was in, just because I was getting plenty of progression on the Brawl Pass in order for me to keep up with the release of new Brawlers. Granted, my main account is actually maxed out, so like, progression isn't that important, but you get the idea. Once I reached Masters, it was like, cool, I reached Masters, I'm done caring now. <laughs> now, when it comes to my free-to-play account, I never missed a single match. I used every single ticket and it, I mean, I got lots of progression from it, but it felt like a massive chore. And that is actually a big red flag for me, okay? A couple of years ago, I kind of realized I was playing all of these games that were just, they just felt like chores. Like I had to log in and I had to do my dailies here. And then I had to do my dailies on this game. And then I had to do my dailies on this game. And I felt honestly like it, it, my interest in gaming was at an all time low because of it. It was bad. So I decided that I was going to stop playing any games that made me feel like they were a chore to play. In my opinion, there's like an ever increasing number of fun, amazing gaming experiences out there. Whether they're paid or free to play, it doesn't matter. There's, there's so many out there. But my time was becoming more and more limited. So I couldn't do all those. So I just quit playing games as soon as they felt like a chore or like they were tedious. Thankfully, Brawl Stars really has not been like that for me with the exception of Club League. Now, maybe it's because I literally create content on the game for a, like a living, right? But like, seriously, I love my free to play account. It's so much fun, but Club League just did not feel fun anymore. It felt like something that I like, had to do rather than something that I actually wanted to do. And it stopped feeling like something I wanted to do as soon as I reached Masters for the first time, like actually. But on my free to play account, I couldn't stop doing it because the whole goal of that account is to max out as fast as possible. And I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video can relate. You want the progression from it. So you went through the tedium, you you completed the chore and like it didn't make you ha any happier probably. It, pro it really honestly probably didn't. So in a weird way, I'm actually glad that the developers just removed Club League from the game, even if it went away with the club shop, simply because now I'm like, oh, I'm still maxing out my account as fast fast as possible and I also don't have to do this annoying chore every week and honestly I feel that way even if it is a nerf to the progression that's how much I've come to really dislike Club League which by the way it is a nerf to progression on my free to play account because I was in a Masters League club but once again I'll share more opinions and details on that a little bit later on the point is removing Club League 
good for the game. It felt like a chore. It wasn't fun. So my big concern, or it's actually not really much of a concern, but the question is, will Mega Pig feel like a chore? And it might eventually, but I've got eight re- Oh. Eight, eight reasons why I think it won't. I can do math, I promise. First of all, way fewer matches are required every month to get the maximum rewards. Power League required 28 matches every month, but the Mega Pig is only going to require 18 matches per month, and that's actually 36% fewer matches required every month compared to Club League. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna add a bonus thing out there I just thought of. Those matches will take less time because the whole draft experience is going to be way more streamlined and a lot faster, so that's exciting. I guess that's bonus number nine, even though I haven't covered the other seven. The second reason why I don't think it'll become very much of a chore is because it offers a lot more flexibility with the Mega Pig. You could use all 18 tickets on one day out of those three days. Let's say you just had one day, you just go and do them all three. Yeah, that'll feel a little bit like a grind, but like 18 in one day is a lot better than having to log in three days randomly throughout the week and get your matches in, right? Now, additionally, you could just use your six tickets each of the three days that it's available while trying to get your daily eight wins, and that way you're going to be maximizing progression either way. The third reason is the fact that you don't have to schedule a time to play with club mates. You can just play with whoever's on already. And the fourth reason is the fact that even if teammates have used all of their tickets, you can still play with them. Now, the fifth reason people will be less likely to get burnt out with a Mega Pig is the fact that it only happens once a month or like a one three day chunk of a period of one period per month right as opposed to club league which happened six days every month so there were like six individual time periods it was really annoying the sixth reason i don't think it'll feel like much of a chore is that it's just way more relaxed than club league club league was stressful if you were in a club that really cared about it well at least if you were in like masters or legendary right but like every single win was essential and you had to out compete other clubs in order to do well and mega pig way chill, right? A club of 30 people that all use their tickets, they only need a 46% win rate to get maximum rewards. Now you absolutely will want to get those maximum rewards. And if you aren't close to that, then that will be stressful because the number of star drops that you get from the mega pig significantly drops if you don't get max uh, rewards. But the thing is you can lose more than half your matches and still get max rewards. It's just simply a better system in my opinion. The seventh reason and the biggest reason why I think that mega pig will not feel like a chore is the fact that it's gonna be fun. We're getting three unique modifiers in the Mega Pig, game, Pig games that all change the way the gameplay is in a huge way. There's more room for unique and fun modifiers that completely change the rules of the game. They could even add more modifiers every update to keep things fresh. They could rotate out the more boring ones and keep on you know, finding out which ones people like the most. Like the modifiers, really fun and exciting. Now the eighth reason why the Mega Pig is less likely to get boring or feel like a chore is the fact that the rewards they are more exciting. After you won Club League, you get a fat stack of club coins. Then you have to go into the shop and you have to like redeem, 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 redeem. And you know what? It was kind of fun. You know, I mean, it's fine, right? But it, honestly, it's kind of boring, right? And also it was annoying to have to spend a lot of time at once. Like if you didn't go and redeem them immediately, you had a big stack of them at once and you're like, oh, I've got to go buy all these. Like it, it was annoying. Additionally, you could spend some of the club coins on the skins, but the selection was really limited and most people really only care about progression. And for the Mega Pig, you will get a fat stack of coins and power points just like in Club League. And you'll also get bling to spend on pretty much any skin in the game. The one that you have been saving up your bling specifically for. And on top of that, you will get 20 star drops that could be literally anything in the game. Most of the time, it'll be more of the same. You'll just get coins, power points, and bling. But one thing that you can get from these star drops that you could not get from Club League are credits towards your next brawler or the chance to just straight up unlock a new brawler, which I've actually been surprised on my free to play account how many new brawlers I've actually been able to unlock just from star drops. It, it's it's a fun, it's exciting. And the fact that you get to unlock 20 of them at a time is very exciting. And it pretty much guarantees that some people in your club will get legendaries if you get the max rewards. And that makes the Mega Pig like a lot more of an exciting social event than Club League ever was. People will be like chatting, be like, like, oh, what did you get? And people will be like, oh, dude, I got this really cool skin that I always wanted. And somebody's like, dude, that's sweet. And you know, it's like, it's an exciting uh, community event. It's really fun. So honestly, I think it's going to be a very long time before I get bored of the Mega Pig or before it becomes like a chore. But there is an unfortunate side of the Mega Pig. In terms of gold and PowerPoint progression, it 
is a nerf for anyone who actively performed well in Club League. So let me give you specifics on how much of a nerf it is. First of all, though, some clarifications on these numbers. Even though I know most players spent all their club coins on just coins, and now you're getting a mix of coins and power points, my numbers assume that somebody spent their club coins on uh, coins and power points at a 50 50 split right so yeah also my estimates are based off of the value of 20 star drops that i gathered from opening 500 star drops the actual exact numbers for progression might be a little bit different but i think it's safe to assume these will be close a max mega pig will give each individual in the club 508 coins 201 power points and 20 star drops, which by my estimate will give you about 1,370 more coins and 425 more power points. That is a 51% nerf to power point progression from a master's club league that got first every single time. And that is a 16% nerf to coin progression from a master's league club league that got first every time. These numbers also include club games, which I went, I looked up the exact values for all of it. That is an average progression nerf of 34% to anyone getting the absolute best rewards every single week before the update compared to after the update. A 34% total nerf, that sounds really bad. Just keep in mind that the progression nerfs are way less extreme for anyone who wasn't getting max reward. Also, it's not a total 34% nerf to your total progression because this is only one sliver of your progression. The progression nerfs are better and better until Diamond 1, where the average progression before the update is about the same as after, right? So anyone that was in Diamond 1 or lower is getting a progression buff thanks to Mega Pig. And it also goes without saying, but I should mention that if you weren't using your tickets in Club League, no matter what Club League you were in, then the Mega Pig will be a significant buff in your progression. Which my guess is most people watching this video don't do their Club League matches every single match. I'm sure that a lot of people, you, a lot of you guys do and did. But honestly, <laughs> I think it's a very safe bet that most players who play the game are getting a progression buff thanks to Mega Pig. I don't have official values or anything like that, but I think that's a really safe bet. And I can almost guarantee you that somebody is going to share these numbers without any context at all and just say, Cairo said it's a 34% nerf to progression, which is just not true. <laughs> Keep in mind, these nerfs are comparing Masters League Club League to Mega Pig. That is it. This is not a 34% nerf to all progression on your account. Nothing's changed to the Brawl Pass. Nothing's changed to any the, like, you know, star drops or anything like that. Most of your progression is still just as good as it was before. But this is a nerf to hardcore players who never miss out on progression before the update. But I do think that we should give Supercell some credit where it's due. We can't point out the negatives without also mentioning the positives, right? Club League had no way of helping you unlock new brawlers. But the Mega Pig does. By my estimates, the average max Mega Pig will give each individual player in a club an average of roughly 160 credits, which is not nothing. It actually may be higher. That's based off of like the average number of credits you might actually get from 20 star drops and also the average number of credits that you would technically get if you had unlocked a new brawler. So the values are definitely different, but it's a good estimate, like 160 credits every single time. That's that's not nothing. Also, what I find interesting is that the max rewards from Mega Pig are 34% lower than max rewards from Club League, but it requires 36% fewer matches every month. So yeah, 34% nerfed progression, 36% buff to how grindy it feels. So it's close to the same number of rewards for your time spent, even if the cap on progression is decreased. Also, playing those matches will be way more fun, a whole lot less stressful. It won't feel nearly like a chore than Club League did. It's just better overall. And they're even giving us a daily login calendar with rewards to help make up for the missing time between the last Club League and the first Mega Pig. They honestly didn't have to do that. They, they could have just released the update without that. And, you know, players would have complained. And honestly, I really think they could have gotten away with it. We would have been happy, but they would have gotten away with it. So I think we should at least give them credit for adding that when they didn't have to. Even if it's just some pins and most of the rewards are rare star drops, it's definitely better than nothing. Now, up until this point, I haven't actually stated my opinion on these changes. I've just been spitting out facts about them, right? So... Now it's opinion time. Obviously, I am not happy about the progression nerfs coming from clubs. They increase the number of coins required for you to max out a brawler by 39% when they added hypercharges into the game. And then they nerf the coin progression from Club League? <laughs> 
<laughs> Why? Oh, come on. I, I, I don't want hypercharges for free. I don't want to be unreasonable here, but like, then you nerf it? Progression? Come on. As a hardcore player who never misses out on progression on my free to play account, that does not feel good. But I'm also really glad that Club League is gone. Like I said, I didn't like having that chore, even if it did give me good progression. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm excited about the Mega Pig. I, I am. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about the flexibility that's coming with it. And yes, I'm excited for the rewards because let's be honest opening up 20 star drops is way more exciting than getting club coins i am going to be showing my max mega pig openings on my free to play series because you guys want to watch that i skipped through unlocking my club coins because that's boring nobody cared mega pig is just more exciting also you get bonus star drops for the top three contributors of each club that's cool in club league if you got a hundred percent win rate it was like cool good job bro thanks for helping out but now it's like oh Oh, I actually get something out of this. That's good. Now, all of that is not to say that I'm like, okay with nerfing progression from club. I don't like that decision. I kind of feel like it was the wrong decision. I didn't love how it came about. Let me explain what I mean here. A few Brawl Talks ago, Frank kind of did like a, an update of like what they kind of plan on working on over the time in the future. They said they wanted to rework Club League, which they've now done. Club League's gone. We've got Mega Pig instead. But they also wanted to rework Power League, which they have not done yet. We don't know exactly how they're going to do it. But Based off of what Frank said, it sounds like they want to make Power League more rewarding. And I don't remember exactly what he said, but there was something that made me think that he was they were going to be adding actual progression resources into Power League. Currently, Power League doesn't offer any progression resources at all. So if they added any, then that would be an infinite buff to progression from club from Power League, right? And it would be a buff to the game's progression. <laughs> Unless they nerfed progression beforehand, which we just experienced. <laughs> now, I don't know if they intentionally nerfed club progression so that they could then buff progression in club league without actually buffing overall progression, but I'm worried that that's the case. And if that's the case, then that's that honestly kind of sucks. It feels like they're creating a progression problem so that they could then fix it later, and I don't love that. Obviously, I would much rather them fix both those issues at the same time. I'm not saying that all the progression needs to come from Club League. I'm not saying the progression needs to be the same, but if they're gonna increase the coin cost to max out brawlers by almost 40%, like, free to play players have gotta be able to catch up in some way. And if they're gonna add a problem only to fix it later, I would much rather it be way less annoying for them to just like add the solution in the same update that they actually introduced the problem. In my Brawl Stars is in trouble video, I talked a little bit about the door in the face method of trying to get people to accept a lower offer than you would have in initially introduced. I've seen it in a lot of games and this kind of feels like that. Now, I'm not claiming that they're being malicious with this at all. I don't think that that's fair. Okay, the Brawl Stars team has done a, a, just a fantastic job of listening to our feedback in the past. They have shown time and time again that they genuinely do care about making the game experience feel really good. For free-to-play players as well, they really do. I think that they deserve some trust here. They've definitely earned that. I'm talking about this like they introduce a problem so that they can fix it later and come out as the heroes. Like that's a manipulative type. I don't think that's what happened. Here's what I think happened. I think the Mega Pig update was ready and the Power League update wasn't. <laughs> so it was a choice of like releasing an update without the Mega Pig and without Club League, so the update would only have one new brawler, which would have been a bad update, only to then release both of them at once. Or they could do what they did, release the content that was ready, but even if it comes with an issue, and then come in with Power League and fix the uh, the issue with buffs. And like, honestly, a year from now, people aren't gonna remember the fact that Club League progression was nerfed two months before progression from Power League got buffed. It's not gonna matter in the long run. Would it have been better if they could release both Club League and Power League reworks in the same update? Yeah. That would have been great, but they can only work so hard. They can only work so many hours in the day. I don't want them to like lose sleep over this. I want them to be able to spend time with their family. I want them to be able to like, you know, do their hours at work and do great content while they're at work and then be able to relax a little bit. I want them to be able to release as much update content as they can without breaking their back, right? So I think it's fine. I'm not super happy about the nerf progression rewards, but it's not a huge nerf to total progression overall. It's it's very slight, and my hope is that they do add some buffs later on. And Mega Pig is just so much better than Club Link. It just is. But will Mega Pig save Brawl Stars? Well, I do think it will help. Even with the slight nerf to progression, I love the concept of the Mega Pig. It's very social. I think it's going to get way more people actually interested interested in participating in the long term than Club League ever did. More importantly though, it's just more fun than Club League was. And like, 
More fun is just better for the game. In my 100% honest review of the last update, I mentioned that Brawl Stars was in trouble and that interest in the game was at a low point before the Star Drop update. And whether or not you liked the economy changes with Star Drops, you cannot deny the fact that that was the first time in a while that interest in Brawl Stars started to increase instead of go down. Now, based off the data from Google Trends and what I'm seeing on YouTube, I think that hypercharges likely helped a bit, but I don't think that they helped quite as much as Star Drops did. And I have a feeling that Mega Pig will kind of have like a, a similar effect of Star Drops. I think that it will help a little bit. My guess is it'll have a little bit of an impact, but probably not quite as much as star drops did but you know any help will be good overall i do think that this update was good even if the most hardcore players did get a slight progression nerf i completely understand that some players will be upset about the nerf progression but the fact that very few players were consistent enough with club league for the nerf to be an actual nerf means that it shouldn't be the big a big deal for most people. But I am really hoping that we'll see some buffs in the game's economy in some way in the future. Maybe even a, a rework to the whole PowerPoint and progression system and how you upgrade brawlers. I stand by what I said two months ago. Hypercharges do feel like they're too expensive. They're good as a concept, but they're not worth five times of a gadget, right? In fact, gadgets honestly are the most accurately priced ability in the game, in my opinion. The more I play my free to play account, the more I realize that so many star powers just don't feel like they are worth 2000 coins. It, it, it's like, like actually, like there are some star powers that are, but there are plenty of brawlers where I would rather just spend the coins to upgrade my brawler and not get any of the star powers until way later on in my progression when I'm actually closer to maxing out my, my account. Because the amount of power that you get from the star powers just isn't anywhere close to the cost of 2,000 coins. And even though gears are in so much of a better spot than they were in the past, for the most part, they don't feel like they're worth 1,000 coins. And you know what? Like I said, hypercharges, they're fun. They're cool. They're exciting. They're not worth 5,000 coins in my opinion, at least not with the amount of power points and coins that we're getting. And honestly, I would, like I said, I'd be fine with a complete rework to how power points and coins work right now. Now that you can't convert power points to coins by using the club shop, I'm getting so many power points. I have plenty on my account, but not enough coins to actually upgrade my brawlers because I'm using my coins to buy gadgets, star powers, gears, and now hypercharges for the few brawlers that I'm trying to max out. The whole coin to PowerPoint progression system, it just, it's feeling a little bit weird and the game's free to play economy just, it feels kind of, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to make it sound like it's bad, but I just have some concerns. It's not great at the moment. It is still possible for a completely free to play player to max out their account with enough time. Now, when I say with enough time, I'm talking about multiple years, but it is possible even though they are releasing 10 to 12 new brawlers every year. However, if they don't buff progression in some way, it's essentially going to be impossible for any new player to catch up, right? Which may or may not be a bad thing in terms of game development, but if a free to play player cannot catch up, is the game really free to play friendly? Like I have a few requirements for a game to be free to play friendly, actually worth giving to somebody that's a free to play player and being like, here, this is friendly for you. You'll be able to compete and do well. One of those requirements is that with enough time and dedication, a free to play player should be able to catch up with and have equal power with anyone that spends money on the game. If that condition fails and they're not able to do that, then the game isn't free to play friendly. I'm not talking about cosmetics or like anything that doesn't actually have an impact on power, but like if a person a free to play cannot unlock all the characters and can't max them all out like within some period of time, the game's not free to play friendly. And there are plenty of games that I play that are not free to play friendly. There's a market for that. I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying the game's not free to play. Like Genshin Impact. I love Genshin Impact not free to play friendly. You can't experience all of the content in the game at a max level without spending some money on it. That doesn't mean the game is not a good game. It's a good game, but you get where the distinguishing factor is here. Brawl Stars has been a very free to play friendly game, but is it still? I, I think that the answer to that is yes at the moment, but it with more time, it feels like it's becoming closer and closer to a no. And, and I don't like that. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing or necessarily a good thing. Not all games are free to play friendly. There is a market for gamers who want pay to win games. And you know what? Sometimes you got to just download a game and play it as a free to play player and just accept the fact that you're not going to be able to exp explore all the content and just have fun with it while you can. But is it worth dedicating your life to if you can't unlock all the content and experience it? I mean, 
that's something you got to decide as a player. And there are plenty of games out there that do monetize with free to play player progression in mind and make their game very free to play friendly. I completely think it's fair for a game to reward players for spending money on the game. I'm not against monetization at all. I want the game to do well financially. I, I love the fact that Brawl Stars is making revenue. I mean, obviously I do. I have, I have code Kairos in the game. I make revenue off of Brawl Stars doing well financially. I'm just pointing out some observations here, sharing some of my opinions, and in my opinion, the game needs a little bit more gold to allow for players to catch up in some way. Hopefully, Power League actually fixes that. I don't know if it will or not, but it's just it's just something I'm concerned about, just something I'm thinking, just, just on my mind, the back of my head, just thinking about it. Now, with all of this said, though, there are some things that I really love about Brawl Stars' free-to-play progression experience. Like, you might not be able to max out all brawlers in the game for free, for quickly. Like, you, you can't. Like, it takes some time. But if there is a brawler that you want to unlock, it does not take very long for you to actually unlock that brawler because you just have to get that far in the trophy road and boom, you've got it. Like my free to play account, it's not even a year old yet and I have 53 of the 72 brawlers in the game. I have all of the brawlers that I desperately want, except for some chromatic brawlers that just released. Like I'm not gonna be able to have Charlie for a couple of months, but that's okay, I'll get her eventually. But like all the brawlers that I am passionate about having, I already have on the account. And you can do that as a free to play player without spending too much time on the game, you really can. And if you really love a certain brawler and you have them unlocked, it's actually not awful to max them out because you have complete control over which brawlers you upgrade. So in that sense, Brawl Stars is actually incredibly free to play friendly in the fact that like, like, on, like I have all of the brawlers on my max account. I probably only play like six of them. You don't need every single brawler max out in the game. Even the pros don't play more than maybe 10 brawlers at a time, like actually. But with hypercharges, man, uh, the, you're not gonna be able to experience all the hypercharges added into the game for a very, very, very long time as a free to play player. You'll be able to experience a lot of them, probably all of the ones that you want to. So that's good. I don't know. At this point, I'm honestly just sharing a bunch of random, random opinions. L let me actually like move on. Now is the point in the video where I have normally rate the update on a scale from one to 10. Like my last 100% honest review, I'm just not gonna do that. I didn't do it because I was having a really hard time balancing what people thought of me, honestly. I'm just gonna say it. In fact, I left the Brawl Stars subreddit just because I, I couldn't handle people like misconstruing how I feel about the update because they would take one single tiny little clip and I don't know, anyway, it was frustrating. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm sharing my 100% honest thoughts. You can agree with it. You can disagree with it. I've said what's good. I've said what's bad. Hopefully that's enough without me actually rating it. But you shouldn't let this prevent you from rating the scale, the update on a scale from one to 10. So drop a comment with hashtag honest pig <laughs> and then include your thoughts on that so I can see how you feel about the update. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>